That's right. I'll show your man to your room. Uh, Duncan, uh, lay my things out. I want to see you later. You'll find Mr. and Mrs. Stiles in there, sir. Thank you. All of you people were in this house when the murder occurred. I have every reason to believe that it was not committed by an outside party. Dick Quincy was killed with this knife. Tell me, Miss Amberson, wasn't it lying on that table? Yes, it was. Weren't you standing near that table when the light suddenly went out? Yes. You were standing on the right of your husband when the blow was struck in the dark. Look here. Don't you think you'd better call the police? <laughs> well, why? <laughs> Hello, Jerry. <laughs> I'm supposed to be dead. Hello, Dick. Well, what is this? <laughs> We've all been trying our hand at that new game, murder. Really? You know my husband, don't you? Yes, indeed. How do you do? How do you do? Of course, you know Dolores Quincy. Greetings, Jerry. Dolores? You met my sister, Diana? Yes, indeed. How are you, Jerry? Glad to see you again. And this is Harry Forrest. How do you How do? How do you do? Well, I'll admit the scene I walked in on had me guessing for a minute. Rather a queer game for you people. Although it should be right in your line, Forrest, you write those mystery bestsellers, don't you? I do my best to reach the bestseller class. <laughs> it pays, you know. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, as long as you're going to discontinue solving my murder, I wish you'd put that knife away. Gee, it makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll take it. Thank you. I shouldn't think uh, writing solutions to murder mysteries you can see for yourself would be so difficult, Forrest. Well, looking at it that way, I guess you're right. But suppose you had to face an actual crime. Presuming one of us here were murdered, for instance. I dare say you'd be as little help as any of us. Probably, but uh, I'd rather not even consider the possibility. Oh, please, let's talk of something more cheerful. No. Well, I thought you were still playing the game. <laughs> What are the plans for tomorrow? We're to turn in early, I believe. I've ordered the yacht to have steam up by seven. <laughs> That's like getting up in the middle of the night. <laughs> yes, it is rather early, isn't it? <laughs> Where are we going, Grace? Cape Cod, Dolores, then Bar Harbor. Ooh, that will be a glorious weekend. Well, we'd better turn in so we can hit the deck early in the morning. Yes. Good, Good idea. idea. Yes. I say, well, I'll talk to you. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Ready, Doug? Dick. Dick. What's the matter, darling? Oh, my... My head's so light, I... 
Oh, it's going, it's going round like a pinwheel. Well, lie down here, dear. Oh, oh I, I can't, I can't understand it. What's the matter, darling? Oh, I'm beginning to feel a little dizzy myself. Did you drink any of that water? Yes, I did, darling. Oh, there must have been something in it. Hello, darling. You know, I had a strange feeling tonight that something might happen to keep us apart. Oh, I'm sorry, Harry, if I seem to neglect you. After your year abroad, I honestly feel more than neglected. You do really want to see me, don't you? Why, of course, you silly. What makes you say that? Oh, nothing but a, but a realization of how much I've missed you, how much I want you. My darling, you're all nervous and upset. What is the matter? Why, nothing, really nothing. I guess it's just the excitement of being home and seeing you again in the yacht trip tomorrow. You're all trembling. What is the matter? It's chilly out here. Well, anyway, sweet, we'll have so much time together tomorrow, and I promise to listen to everything you have to say. Good night. Good night. I'll help you, dear. There's something worrying you. You've been nervous all evening. Oh, it's nothing, Gordon. Nothing that you can help. It's some trouble Diana is having, that's all. I think I'll go and see her for a moment. Do you mind? Certainly not. I'll say good night now. Good night, darling.
I was sure you wouldn't disappoint me. Still as fascinating as ever. You know, marriage has been very kind to you, my dear. We haven't time for that, Jerry, please. You forced me to come here to bargain with you. What do you want for them? A price you can easily pay. I'm not in a position to pay anything. Oh, but yes, you are, my dear. Quite easily. Go to your room, Grace. I'll handle this. Jerry, you're not playing fair. This must stop right now. You know, my dear, you're beautiful when you try to be angry. Even more beautiful than your sister. That's enough of that. Well, you can't blame a man for recognizing beauty when he's face to face with it. You suppose you'll make it necessary for me to scream? Oh, you won't do that, Diana. I didn't drag you into my room. And how would you explain your presence here? Well, what do you want? Oh, imagine a modern young girl asking that. Yes, dear. Good night. Good night, dear. Crazy people.
out. Take it easy. You better go out on that balcony and look around, see if there's anything incriminating. All right, Sergeant. Now, folks, be calm. We're going to make this just as easy for you as possible. You stick around by that hall. While Dr. Patton is making his examination, I want to talk to the parties who occupied the two adjoining rooms. Okay. Locked on this side, Captain. Open it up. Nobody home? Try the other one. Locked on this side, too. Open it up. I got somebody. Come on, wake up. Get up, get up. Oh, it's not seven o'clock already, is it, Skipper? It ain't seven o'clock and I ain't a skipper. I'm Sergeant Snyder from headquarters. There's been a guy murdered. Murdered? Shh. Take it easy, lady. It's not you that's been murdered. It's another fellow. Well, who was it? Fellow in the next room. Jerry Murdoch? Right. Where were you last night? Why, in this room. Where else? Nowhere. Shh. That's no way to talk to an officer. Where were you Friday night? Friday night? Well, that was last night. That's right. Where were you? Well, don't shout like that. I have a terrible headache. Yeah? Who gave you the headache? You probably did. I'll get to you later. Where does your headache? In my head, of course. See? That water must have been poisoned. Water? Water? What water? Come on, make it snappy. Get dressed. The captain wants to talk to you. Poison. I want to talk to the young fellow who occupied that room. His name is Forrest. Okay, Captain. He died between 12 and 1. Death was instantaneous. Knife pierced his heart. Well, while you're here, will you make a test of that, Doctor? Oh, Mr. Woods. Hey. You. Who, me? Yeah. Oh, Forrest is the name. Oh, Captain Brown wants to talk to you. Uh, the rest of you people can go to your rooms. When I want you, I'll call you. Sleeping powder, that's all. Pretty heavy dose. Here, try this one, Doctor. Same thing. Thanks. Well, hello, Forrest. Hello, sir. Say, I'm glad you were here last night. You know, you were of great assistance to me at one time, and you might be of some help on this case. I'll do what I can. Murdoch was killed last night between 12 and 1. Did you hear anything? Nothing at all. Did you take a drink of water last night? Why, uh, yes. What time? Oh, I took a drink, I should say, about midnight, just after I, uh... Oh, just about 12 o'clock. Any ill effects? I know. Was anything wrong? The water in your room must have been drugged then after 12. Drugged? Yes. And you must have been out of your room when the crime was committed then. Oh, no. How do you know you wasn't unless you know when it was committed? Answer me that. Well, I uh, was out on the terrace after 12. I saw Murdoch moving about in his room, through his window. 
I returned to my room and I didn't leave it until this morning. And we found the water in that room drugged also. Oh, yes? <laughs> Ain't that rich. A detective story writer mixed up in a real case. You're going to learn something about murder now, mister. Pardon? Oh, yes, I agree. Uh, would you like to give me a chance to use my theory, Sergeant? Hear that, Captain? Say, you fellas that write add up clues one by one and you get six. What we usually get adding one and one together is nothing. Yes, I know. And I wouldn't take Snyder too literally, Forrest. I think a theoretical mind would help a lot on this. Then I can ride along with you? How come the dope water? Answer that. Why both doors locked on the inside? Answer that. What was the motive? Answer that. And who did it? Answer that. What's more? Now, wait a minute, Sergeant. One thing at a time. You go down and clear out the living room. I'll talk to everyone in there. Okay, Captain. You know, it's a very strange thing. Uh, last night, Murdoch suggested this very situation. Is that so? Yes, yeah, made one or two rather sarcastic remarks about my being useful in a real-life case like this. I wonder. Frankly, so do I, for. But be no harm if you want to trail along. Well, that's very nice of you. I'd be glad to. Thanks very much. Hey, where are you going? Why, you told me to go to my room, didn't you? Yeah. Where's your room? In Brooklyn. Are you trying to make a fool out of me? Don't you say nature did it. You better come in here where I can watch you. Green. Yes, Sergeant. Never mind now. You're Murdoch's man, aren't you? That's right. Chauffeur, valet, and bodyguard. Why did he need a bodyguard? Why ask me? Where were you when he was killed? How do I know? When was he killed? See, Professor, what we're up against in real life, nobody knows nothing. And you don't know anything about this, do you? Not a thing. You know of anyone who might have had a grudge against him? I don't know anybody. That's all. And don't leave the apartment until you get word from me. Phelps is in the kitchen working on the fingerprints. See what he's found, especially on that knife. And send the butler in here. That chap knows something. What makes you think so? Well, I think it's obvious. You see, uh... Come on, tell it. Is there anything you want to say before I ask questions? Yes, sir. About the latch, sir. What about it? I put the latch on at 12 o'clock last night, sir. And 15 minutes later, making my last round, looking at the windows and lights, I noticed the latch was off. It was on again this morning, sir. Well, do you know of anyone who might have tampered with it? No, sir, I do not. Anything else? Yes, sir. Something a servant sees and seldom talks about. But under the circumstances, I think I can tell you. You can. I saw one of the household enter Mr. Murdoch's room. What time was that? About, uh, 12.15, sir. Who was it? A lady. I asked you who it was. It was, uh, Miss Amberson. He's mistaken. How do you know? I was with Miss Amberson at that time last night. That's all just now. And don't leave the apartment. Thank you, sir. Not a print on it, Captain. Well, you hold on to it, Sergeant. It's the only evidence we've got. Hmm. Now send Miss Amberson in here. Right, Cap. You know, Forrest, in books you can absolve people from crime if you like them. But we can't. I understand. After this, I think you'll stick to your books. Captain Brown wants to see you, miss. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of unless you're guilty.
Why were you in Murdoch's room last night? It was the butler who told me. It's true, I was in Murdoch's room last night. But I can't tell you why. His death occurred about the time you were in there. I think you owe it to yourself to make an explanation. There's no explanation I can make. Do you know what your refusal to answer means? Yes, I know. There's nothing I care to say. I'm sorry, but I must place you under arrest on suspicion of murder. I don't think we need to humiliate Miss Amberson any longer. I killed Murdoch. Oh, Harry, you can't say that. You can't. A very gallant gesture, Mr. Forrest, but I don't believe you. I told you I saw Murdoch in his room last night. It's true. I did. He was trying to force his attentions on Miss Amberson. I naturally interfered with that. She left... I gave him what he deserved. Oh, Harry, you know you didn't kill him. I don't believe you, Forrest. I still think it's up to the lady to explain. I've told you there's nothing I can say. If you'll get ready, we'll go down to headquarters. I'll be ready in a minute. Sergeant. You stay here and question everybody fully. Find out where you can reach them and report to headquarters. So you do it, mister? Short and snappy, I calls it. No storybook bunk for us. Well, there's still a lot of things you don't know. For instance, there's somebody you haven't questioned yet. Captain Brown has agreed that I might ask you a few questions, Mrs. Quincy. It's about Jerry Murdoch. Is it true that Murdoch was the financial backer of your tea room? That's a lie. I was only asking the question. And you have the answer, haven't you? That's all, I think. You see, everybody knows where you got the money from. At the end of this mess, I tell you, I'm through. This is no time to talk about that. You see, he runs a tea shop just off the avenue. And neither of them had enough money to set it up. I think we ought to drop in one of these days. We will. I'm ready, Captain. Ring for the elevator. Darling, I'll never forget what you tried to do for me today. I'm afraid I failed you, darling. Oh, Harry, you didn't fail. Send them in. Hello, Forrest. Hello. Seen that? Oh, I've seen that story. The one about Rita Kane? Yeah. Says she's Jerry Murdoch's wife and has already put in a claim for the estate. What about going to see her? Give me Kennedy. Oh, did you get that address yet? Ambassador Apartments, West 54th Street. Thanks. 
Well, Forrest, we're going calling. Motives? Clues. You can come along if you want to. May I? Thanks. Thank you. We're not interested in your marriage, Miss Kane, but we would like to know where you were last night. Why, I... I hardly remember, Captain. You are a captain, aren't you? Yes, I'm afraid so. Where were you last night? Oh, I remember now. I had a headache, and I thought a little ride would help me. Cut the concert, Snyder. Okay, Cap. You probably drove along the Merrick Road, eh? Of course, that's just what I did. That's awfully clever of you to think of it. Uh, see if you can remember what time you came home. Well, you see, I had a little trouble with my car. Well, then it was after one before you got back. Well, I can't remember for sure. Just what time did you leave the Stiles' home last night, Miss Kane? Listen, Flatfoot, you haven't got anything on me. And if you want to think I was somewhere, you'll have to prove it. And if you don't believe I was married to Jerry Murdoch, the certificate is all locked up in the safety deposit vault, and you can see it. Come on in, Duncan. We're just making a little social call, too. Hey, Duncan, just why did you leave the Stiles home last night? Why don't you keep your mouth shut? Why don't you? I didn't tell them a thing. Well, when you two get through arguing, we'll get somewhere. And if you answer right, it's going to save you a lot of grief. Well, uh, Rita's my sister. Murdoch met her through me, and they were married last June. His family had stopped his allowance, and he was afraid they'd disinherit him entirely if... They found out he'd married a showgirl. Another thing. Murdoch figured it would cramp his style with the women, but came out he was married. We were married because he couldn't make the grade any other way. You know what I mean? I do. I've nothing to be ashamed of. I knew he liked to play around, too. Rita came out to see Murdoch last night, and she threatened to make their marriage public. Well, I figured if she got him disinherited, she'd be out a lot of dough, too. She got in the house all right, and it took me almost an hour to convince her she ought to go home. That's all I know. Check that out. Oh, uh, another thing that you might know. Did Murdoch finance the Dolores tea room? Sure he did. And Quincy wasn't the only husband with a pretty wife that sponged off Murdoch. Mm. We'll talk about that later. Hey. Well, Mr. Tree, your book finished yet? Not yet, but I've got plenty of good ideas. Save them for your next one. We've made our arrest. This one is closed. Say, Sergeant, did you get any more out of those people over at the apartment? Nobody wouldn't say nothing. And you know how I go after them. Yes, I know, Sergeant. You better leave that knife with me. Yes, sir. It's gone. Did you leave it anywhere? No, not me. I had it in his pocket. Looks like our only evidence is gone. Some crook must have lifted it off in me. What do you think of that, mister? Why ask me? You lost it. And you start looking for it right away. Yes, Captain. Smart man, Snyder. Yeah. Well, by the way, Captain, when are we going over to the Dolores Tea Room? Well, I guess they're closed now. We'll go over there tomorrow. Thank you. 
We'd like to see Mrs. Quincy, please. You'll find her at the cashier's desk. Fancy seeing him here. What's the answer to that, Mr. Bush? Nothing at all. I wonder what's keeping our friend Delores. Oh, she'll be here all right. If I can find Mrs. Quincy for you. Good. Good heavens. Quiet. Get behind the counter and act as if nothing had happened. How do you do? How do you do? Everything satisfactory? Everything is just fine. Well, it's fine. It's a wonderful day, hasn't it? Marvelous day. Come again. You bet. Here's that knife again. Hey, Forrest, go through that door and see where it leads to with him. Snyder, get the medical examiner here right away. Also, call Mr. Quincy. I'll get Quincy. Building Apartments, West, 3176. 3176? That's it, man. Hello, oh, Inspector. Anything new? Dolores Quincy has just been murdered. What? Why, that's him. Easy, easy. That's frightful. I just talked with her a few minutes ago. How did you happen to be here? She telephoned me to my office. Told me she had something important to tell me. Was it important? I don't know. She didn't have a chance to tell me she was coming here to my table. I haven't the slightest idea what it was about. Well, it must have been important because it cost her her life. Gives one a creepy feeling, doesn't it? Yeah. See, I was wondering if you'd mind coming to my office when I got through here, Mr. Stiles. There's a couple of things I'd like to talk to you about. Yes, of course I'll go. Thanks. That leads to a private office. The door inside leads to a storeroom. No one around. Thank you. Getting worse all the time, ain't it? Think you'll be able to work something out of it, Mr. Uh... Forrest? Snyder is coming slowly around to your way of thinking. Well, you can't expect me to untangle two murders off. Suppose you're convinced about Miss Amberson now. Yes, I'll phone down and have her released right away. As a matter of fact, you ought to go down and meet her, and then join me at the office later. All right. Dolly! Dolly! Where is she? Dead. What's the matter? Oh, 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 oh
When I was released, Harry was waiting for me. Oh, he's a modest old darling. He won't admit it, but I know he arranged everything. You give me too much credit. It was Captain Brown that released you. Have the police any idea who committed these horrible crimes? I really don't know. Have you any idea? I have certain suspicions, but as I can't prove them, I'd better not say anything about them. I do wish Gordon would come home. I can't understand what can be keeping him. Harry, you've been awfully sweet. I think you deserve to know why I went to Murdoch's room that night. Don't tell me anything you don't want to. I learned long ago not to inquire too deeply into Warren's motives. Oh, you are, darling. But Harry, I went there to protect someone who's very dear to me. You mean Grace? Yes, she and Murdoch were having a scene, so I went in to see if I could put a stop to it before Gordon found out. I want to see Mrs. Stiles. I'll get her for you right away. Hello, Mr. Spire. What is your name? Snyder, Mr. Crow. Oh, yes. Anything new? Plenty. You could probably write two or three books with what I know. Probably. Yes. The, oh, Mrs. Stiles, Captain Brown wants to see you down at headquarters. Wants to see me? Oh, there must be some mistake. Them's my orders. You better be there too, Mr. Forrest. Something important has happened. I know. I know what it is. They have Gordon down there. They've arrested Gordon. Great darling, it's nothing of the kind. You mustn't be so excited. Yes, it is. I'll go with you. I'll be ready in a moment. Oh, Miss Diana. You're wanted on the phone. Where? In the library. Thank you. Hello. This is Diana Ambersey. What? Oh, you can't do that. What is this? I'm unable to reach my lawyer. He evidently hasn't arrived at his home yet. Sit down. Thank you. Have a cigar. No, thanks. Diana, what is it? Harry, someone just telephoned me and said if you didn't keep out of this affair, I'd be killed too. Who had the nerve to say anything like that? Why, I don't know. I couldn't recognize the voice. It was evidently disguised. Oh, Thomas, I think I know who that was. Come on, I'm an officer of the law. Let me in on it. Oh, Thomas, I'm going out with Sergeant Snyder. While we're gone, I don't want you to open that door to anyone. Do you understand? Yes, sir. It may mean your life as well as Miss Amberson's. The door shall not be opened, sir. Uh, Snyder, we'd better be going. Oh, Harry, I'm afraid. That's all right, darling. You're probably as safe here as you would be anywhere. And I think I know what to look out for. Won't you sit down, Mrs. Stiles? There are a few questions we'd like to ask, and you might be able to help us. Were you very friendly with Jerry Murdoch? Why, no, I was not. And why was he invited to your weekend party? He insisted upon it himself. Before I was married, I thought I loved Gerald Murdoch. There's no need to go into that, except to say that I was silly enough to write him a lot of foolish letters. 
Jerry insisted that I go into his room that night if I wanted my letters back. He said he tried to. Well, that's when Diana came into the room. She refused to explain that to you because she was shielding me. Diana made me leave. All she would tell me the next morning was that he had refused to give up the letters. I knew about the letters, dear. I bought them from Murdoch. I arranged the matter that afternoon. I haven't the slightest idea what they contain. They belong to you. Oh, darling. But there were many more than those. Any letters found on the body, Snyder? Not a single one, Captain. Some letters missing and ten thousand dollars in cash gone. Ten thousand dollars? So that's what your husband paid for the letters and didn't get them all. We thought you might know something about the money. It wasn't on Murdoch when he was found dead. Why, that's the first I've heard about the money. If I might suggest it, Captain. I think that's all you need of Mr. and Mrs. Stiles. I think we'll take Mr. Forrest's advice. Thanks for being here. Well, what do you make of that, Forrest? I think I knew was guilty. Who? Oh, but you couldn't make an arrest. Why not? Well, it's only theory. I knew all the time the professor hit on the truth. It looks like he converted Snyder. That's encouraging, to say the least. I'm going to send out an order and have all the people who are at the party here at 11 o'clock in the morning. Well, wait a minute. It's now 7.30. Will you hold that order until 10 tonight? Why? Well, somebody's liable to make a run for it. Detail enough men to have all the suspects watched. Oh, anything else on your mind, Forrest? No, that's all right now. But I'll see you later. Right. This came last night about 10 o'clock. I got one just like it. It's a trap. What'll we do? I got a phone from headquarters right after my letter was delivered. So did I. 
They haven't got anything on us. Why don't we stay and face it out? No, we won't take a chance. We'll beat it. You got the grist packed like I phoned you to? Yes, they're up on the landing. I think we're making a mistake running away like this. Mark, quit arguing. We haven't much time as it is. Go get your coat on. I wonder if they went out the back way. No, I don't think so. Carter and Jones are back there. That'll there come. Just a minute there, buddy. Well, what's the matter with you? Not a thing. You're under arrest, that's all. Come on. Well, how about taking my car? No, I'll buy the gas this trip. Let's go. Come on, sister. Well, let go. Don't be Come so on. tough. Have a seat. We expect a few more friends any minute now. Thank you. Cut the rust up and remember I'm a lady. Taking another ride, Rita? Still have that same headache? Why, are you a doctor? Sit down and have a consultation. So you were trying to make a getaway, hey, Duncan? Wouldn't you like to know? You don't have to be so rough about it. Shh. Never show the superior officer. Well, I guess we're all here, Captain. I followed Quincy to Grand Central. He bought a ticket for Canada, but... Here he is, Captain. Well, I'm glad to see you. Sit down. That little trick of mine worked better than I anticipated. It looks that way. I tried to work on the guilty conscience. Seems there were more of them than I expected. Mm -hmm. All the evidence you need now to make an arrest is $10,000. Yes, that's all. Perhaps you might find it if you looked around a little bit. Oh, my. What about, uh... That might be an idea. You mind? Certainly not. Try and get away from me, will you? What's your hurry? So, that's it, huh? You'll get light for this. I got that money from Quincy. I made him give it to me because I saw him come out of Murdoch's room. I didn't kill Murdoch. He did. Oh, he's crazy. I never saw the money before. He has it, hasn't he? The balance of the letters, Captain. Snyder, take him downstairs.
Phone him for a material witness and her too. Come along, sister. You folks can go. I'm sorry to have inconvenienced you. Thank you. Dolores Quincy was murdered because she probably knew too much. She knew the truth and sent for Stiles to tell him. And Duncan saw a great chance for blackmail. What are you doing tomorrow night? Not a thing. I'd like to come and have dinner with me. All right. I'm going to put you in my new book. Fine. All right? <laughs> oh, say, there's one other thing I'd like to know. If Quincy and his wife were drugged, how could he possibly have murdered Murdoch? He wasn't drugged. Only one of the glasses showed in his sediment. Besides, I looked in their eyes next morning. Mrs. Quince's showed the effects of the drug. Quince's did not. That's what I call a good day's work. <laughs> Say, Mr. Shrub, I've got a lot of other ideas. Maybe me and you could write a story. I'll come over sometime. That'd be fine. I'll bet it was Quincy that threatened Miss Amberson over the phone. Maybe you're right. Maybe. I phoned you that it wouldn't be necessary for you to be here this morning. I know. But I was interested. I just wanted to make sure. Well, wish me luck, Captain. Good day, Mr. Forrest. Why not? <laughs> <laughs>